Don't get stuck that I'm only using 10% of my brain. That story is false. You can use 100%. There are many different ways to engage and activate the whole brain. From the way we live in our consciousness, can you distinguish a conscious manifestation versus a real manifestation? Did I just create something in my head or was that actually real, what I just saw? Biologically, you'll never know the difference. We could all be sitting here right now, but we're actually, this is a long time ago. We're not even here right now. This isn't even the real moment. How do I know it's real? Well, I see it and I feel it and I smell it and I touch it. I go, yeah, go to sleep. And in your dream state, your biology will be activated by your brain. Your sensory nervous system will experience what you've already done before. And to your sleep state, can you tell if it was a real state or a dream state? Not in your sleep. Ah, the conundrum of quantum physics. We don't know where we are. We're having to pick this probable moment and be in this probable moment at the same time. Yet, according to quantum mechanics, we could have other probable instantaneous moments right now where we're not even in this reality, we're in another reality. Which reality are we in? You say, well, it's the one I'm biologically sensing. And I'm going, biologically sensing in your dream or biologically sensing in real life? The answer is you can't tell. And that's the most exciting part because it really leaves open an understanding how we could go back and change the past. Or at the current moment, we can change the future. We can do more than just follow our noses into the next minute. We can rewrite the whole story again and again and again. We've all heard that, yes, we're only using 10% of our brain. And boy, if we could use all the rest of it, we'd be super smart. But hey, that's all we use. Firstly, where did that number come from, 10%? A long time ago, when putting the body together through an understanding of histology and the cells that make up organs, a study of the brain revealed one very important fact, and that is only 10% of the brain was made up of neurons. 90% of the cells in the brain were not neurons, but they were called supporting or connective tissue and given the name glial cells. Well, what's really interesting about that is in the neuron principle, the neuron doctrine, it was believed that the neurons were the functional cells of the brain and the glial cells were more or less just support. Well, then by definition, right away, it says, and you're only using 10% of your brain because that's all that the neurons comprise in the brain, 10%. For a long time, the glial cells, again, were thought to be just like connective tissue support uh, physically and nutritionally, the neurons. But over the last number of decades, what we started to find is this, there was a misunderstanding about glial cells. That glial cells are a lot more important in neural function than just physical support. Glial cells can inhibit or activate neurons. Glial cells connect to neurons. Glial cells can control the activity of neurons. So all of a sudden, these glial cells, which were looked at as just passive cells in the brain, turn out to be actually quite functional in integrating the nature of how the brain works. In a way of looking at it in a simple analogy, consider that the neurons are nouns in a sentence and that the glial cells are the verbs and the adjectives and the adverbs, the modifiers of all the nouns. So the glial cells create a, uh, a fulfillment of a picture. So neurons are like a stick figure. And when you add the glial cells, you fill out the nature of the whole human. So glial cells become a very functional, integrated part of all neuronal activity. So the concept of the neuron doctrine that said only neurons are involved with uh, functioning in, in the nervous system, it turns out the glial cells are as well. So now we're not dealing with 10% of the brain. We're dealing with 100% of the brain. Yes, you have access to 100% of your brain all of the time. But does that mean that we actually use the whole brain all of the time? And the answer is no, because what we start to find out is when we start to live in patterns and in habits, that what happens is we just activate certain neuronal pathways that are habitual pathways. And as a result, these are the pathways that have preference in our everyday life. But if you can engage whole brain activity, you can enhance your consciousness and your awareness and your ability to control your life. So basically it says that we can become whole brain when we start to think holistically. 
instead of just playing recurrent programs that play over and over again and activate the same pathways. Now we're beginning to find out there are many different ways to engage and activate the whole brain. Some of them involve simple exercises such as something called brain gym. And brain gym is a very interesting exercise of the body and the nervous system integration in this way. My right hand is controlled by my left hemisphere. My left hand is controlled by my right hemisphere. But here's an interesting story. If my right hand, controlled by my left hemisphere, crosses the midline, then it simultaneously gets picked up by the other hemisphere because now it's in that territory as well. So when you cross your arms and when you cross your legs, what you're doing is causing the right and the left hemispheres to work together in harmony. When we are activating brain uh, synchronization, where right and left hemispheres are engaged together simultaneously, it activates something like super learning. With both hemispheres working together, we have much more superior characteristics of neural function. However, after age seven and eight, we start to express what is called brain dominance, meaning during the day, we don't have synchronization in both hemispheres. During the day, it's like a wave form. Sometimes we're more in the left hemisphere, sometimes we're more in the right, then it comes back to the left and back to the right, so that we're cycling through one hemisphere at a time. This is called brain dominance, where one hemisphere is dominant over the other hemisphere. Integrating our lives is very difficult in brain dominance for a simple reason. As been suggested, our left hemisphere is based on logic and details. Our right hemisphere is actually associated with emotions and wholeness. And the, this becomes very important because if you're only looking with your left hemisphere, then all the logic things make sense, but there's no emotional component to it. And reverse, if you're in the right hemisphere, you get emotionally tied up, but the logic drops out. Well, this happens to us ever since the time we were eight through our adult life. If you can get both hemispheres to be in sync, hemisync, then you're engaging logic and emotions at the same time. That opens up a window for super learning opportunities where you can download information very, very quickly and very fast, but it also opens up a whole wide range of thinking that includes an emotional component as well as an intellectual component, which is necessary to fulfill a whole picture. So if you're operating from brain dominance, you're actually shutting off one component of your nervous system at that time. So if you do an exercise like brain gym, where you're involved with crossing your arms and your legs, uh, when you do that, you start to integrate both. Very interestingly, when we have hemisync, we're much more calm, collected, and able to really uh, express neurological functions that are very fully supporting of ourselves. And this is why it's very interesting when you go home and relax at night, sometimes you find yourself with your ankles crossed over each other just sitting in your chair. Without even knowing what you're doing, by crossing your ankles, you're actually engaging a whole brain process. So if you're stressed, for example, during the day, or you just wanna relax when you go home at night, crossing your arms and legs actually engages both hemispheres, which calms the system down, but engages the whole brain process. So you become much more effective in your relaxed state. So if you're having a tough moment during the day, just take a moment and cross your arms and legs, hold them together, and just wait for about three or four minutes and you'll start to feel a calmness overcome. And in this calmness, your neurological functions will be totally enhanced. When we start to operate from patterns that are replayed every day, we start to express very specific pathways that are reused over and over and over again. And as a result, we actually shut down a large amount of functioning of the brain and just go through the habit, the patterns that replay themselves over and over again. So basically, what you really have to understand is this, we can use 100% of the brain, but if we play the same patterns over and over again, we don't need to use 100% of the brain. So I'd just like to suggest that once you start to recognize that you can have hemisync, where you can get right and left hemispheres to engage together and stay conscious, you are using 100% of your brain activity. And when you do that, you'll also find that your life is easier, more harmonious and healthier because when you're using your full nervous system, it will support your life and enhance your growth. And this becomes important. So don't get stuck that I'm only using 10% of my brain. That story is false. 
you can use 100% and it's available to us. And basically all you have to understand is this, stay conscious, stay mindful, and stop playing the same patterns over and over again because that opens up an opportunity to create new behavior when you stop playing the programs.